Jax. That could laid on a bag. All right, let's talk about Pete Rock, the chocolate boy wonder. One of the undisputed goats of this rap shit, without a doubt. In my opinion, doesn't get enough love. Shout out to Pete Rock. Um, what can I say about Pete Rock, man, that a lot of people, I guess, haven't said already? Um, phenomenal producer. Absolutely phenomenal. Oof. See how this shit hits you, man? See, I'm a layman, so I can't really get into the details of how these like beats are made and like the science of what they're doing. Um, maybe one day when I've done my film stuff and I have more time to kind of analyze stuff or and, and learn, because actually it is important. I would love to know the actual science of these things, right? Because at the end of the day, there is a craft, right? I want to say that Pete Rock is like the baselines of Pete Rock that make him a goat, okay? So Pete Rock, for those of y'all who are not so familiar, is a producer that came out in the late 80s, I believe. Um, cousin of Heavy D's and um, proceeded to go on to define a whole sound pretty much um, I would argue he's probably the father of lo-fi him and Q-Tip maybe to a certain extent um, but anyway the point of Pete Rock what I love about Pete Rock that to me Pete Rock does better than nobody else right Pete Rock is an absolute master of this is that his beats to me are re like they're relaxed home cooking that's, that's how I would say it. I'm in the kitchen right now, right? Bum-ass kitchen for my haters. <laughs> but Pete Rock's music is home cooking to me. It's that traditional, you know, you know spaghetti and, and, and meatballs. Bur you know, like, it's not doing anything super crazy, right? Um, but at the same time, it is made with the highest quality ingredients. And it just feels like home, right? So... It's that sort of good old fashioned soul that, you know, you can picture like when you hear a Pete Rock beat, it's almost like you can picture like old family photos from the 70s and shit like that in the background. It's It has a sort of family feel. And at the same time, it's hard as hell. Like Pete Rock to me figured that out in a way that I think previous producers, maybe they tried or they didn't try. I don't know. They couldn't do it because it's not wimpy and lame. A lot of people have tried to do the Pete Rock thing, in my opinion, um, in terms of that like relaxed sound, but it just sounds lame and it doesn't really have any oomph to it. But Pete Rock, it's it's brilliant how he does it actually, because it'll be some real cool, relaxed type of shit, but it's still got that. You know, you can still go all out. You like think of Ravi Unique A Z. You could chill. It's super chill. You could relax to that beat. You can lay in the cut. Or if you want to dance to that shit, da, 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 da. Uh -huh. like it's perfect, right? And Pete Rock to me really epitomizes that. That's what I love about Pete Rock, honestly. Um, he's got so many beats. I can't go through all of them, like phenomenal ones. Some, obviously the popular ones, not so popular, but they're all phenomenal. Um, let me see here. The two is one of my favorite ever. This is like... You know, if you listen to this shit close enough, man, you just might start shedding tears. It's that good. You know what I'm saying? It's a fucking beautiful beat, man. Um, and even just the meaning behind it, you know, the two of them, they're always going to be together. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the it's the perfect encapsulation of, like, friendship, brotherhood, that kind of thing. Beautiful song. Um, this is my one of my favorite Pete Rock beats ever. But Pete Rock has so many great ones. Um, let me see here. Pete Rock, to me, if you're trying to come with a sound, like you're a rapper and you want something that's like, um, that sort of old-fashioned, really feel-good, classy, the, classy, this is the epitome of class. This is the, one of the classiest beats I've ever heard in rap, right? Mm -hmm. Classy. Like, this is classier than any almost anything I've heard from Primo, right? Pete Rock nailed this shit. Like... I can imagine the song being played in the hood, and it works, and it's, it's still good, and it's still beautiful. I can be in a museum, right, with my champagne glass, and listen to the shit. That's what I'm talking about. Pete Rock literally merged those both, those worlds in a way that I think no producer has ever done. So if you're looking for that classy sound, you're a rapper and you want something classy that, that still has that feel, that black, good old-fashioned soul feel, you gotta go to Pete Rock. Pete Rock is number one 
the greatest at doing this shit, then this is the kind of stuff that we're hoping that he, you know, he does when Common, him and Common work together, because that's the excitement, right? Remember when I was talking about great producers give you a certain um, imagination or they make you think a certain thing? Now that Common and Pete Rock are working together, you're excited because you can imagine, it's like, oh my God, Common's going to go back to being that sophisticated, classy, but still, you know, very much of the soul, the funk of black folk, right? So you're expecting him to drop some of the best work yet, maybe, hopefully, right? That's kind of the point. And that's what I mean about producers giving you that sound and being the masters of their domain, right? Um... If you're going to Pete Rock, that's what you're expecting. That's what you're hoping to get. That's a pairing that makes sense, right? Common and Pete Rock. And they've done stuff together before anyway. Obviously, you've heard this incredible beat. They reminisce over you. Um, you know, it's funny, man. I love the song. I, I, I heard this. I think I heard the song in like 2003-ish, or maybe it might have been 2004, actually. I think was the first time I really heard it, because this is when I had just moved to Montreal, and I used to hang out at all these underground rap clubs, and whenever the DJ dropped this, people would lose their fucking minds. And I was like, what is this song? Like, uh, And I listened to it, and I was like, oh, I really like this shit. And then I started digging like crazy for anything P-Rock I could get my hands on. But what I also want to point out about this beat that in particular stunned me and I didn't notice right away was during the chorus, right? You hear this, ooh, 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 ooh. like for some reason I wasn't paying attention to that shit. It took me like a good two, three years. And so one day I was listening to this shit and I was like, oh my God, is that like in the background? Like, is that what's going on? And I just was like, this is beautiful. Like that is some detail, right? Absolute brilliance. Um, so we all know that song. In terms of Pete Rock's like most recent stuff, the last great Pete Rock beat, well, there's a couple of contenders. Um, let me think here. There's a song called The Pharmacy with Dr. Dre, Corrupt, and uh, Pete Rock. I don't know if Pete Rock did this beat. If he did, it's a good beat. Um, I'll link it in the description so you'll see it. I don't know if he did this beat. Um, this one, I would say, unequivocally is the last like great Pete Rock beat. And this song is called Yes Sir, Pete Rock and Corrupt. This was this is fire. This came out like 2010, I believe. Um, this was like the last like yeah man, I'm fucking with this song. Like I can listen to this over and over and over and over again, right? That addictive. And again, listen to it. Classy, but still got that bass line. It still got that mm, the, that gutter bass that hits you, right? But it's still very like. Still the hottest mother Ow. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Classy. That's what I love about P-Rock, man. Uh, and then, of course, there's this. Check me out. This was very good. Fantastic record uh, with AZ. This beat is, is, is a good beat. I would say this is like a B-level P-Rock beat. It's good. It's not amazing, but it's certainly a good beat. And this came out like, what, two years ago? Check me, check, 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 check me, check, check, check me out, y'all. <laughs> so, shout out to Pete Rock, man, and uh, much love. I wish the dude luck with the Common album. I'm really looking forward to it, honestly, man. Um, you know, Pete Rock, hey, if you continue to make great shit, like, for example, with Check Me Out, that's a good song, and it came out recently. So, these older producers, they always have one in the chamber, man. Like, you can't really count them out entirely, right? They will make some shit that you, every now and then, where you're like, yeah, man, you still got it, you know what I mean? So, I'm hoping. Uh, the stuff I would say I skipped over was the stuff he did with Smoke Dizza. Um, I think he did some stuff with Camp Low. He did some Griselda stuff. All that shit to me was not very good. Um, I didn't listen to all of it, but I certainly checked it out when it came out, and I don't remember liking any of it, to be honest with you. Um, so, that didn't get mentioned. I remember there was a song that I think Conway did with Pete Rock. Was it called Piper? Yeah. This was... 
This is okay. I mean, this is all right. I remember thinking like, okay, of all the Griselda stuff that P-Rock has done or, you know, this is all right. But again, I don't, you know, already, you already know how you about Griselda. I don't like Conway's voice. I don't like none of them voices. And obviously their beat selection to me doesn't, doesn't hit. I think their beats are whack as fuck. So, um, anyway. It, this beat I didn't think was strong. It's 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 too tame. See, this is where I think Pete Rock as a producer can run into problems because if his stuff is a little, he he did this really well with the SP when he's no he called him the king of the SP. When he had that sound, it was tame, but it was still hard. And I think Pete Rock sometimes can veer into this the side where it's like it's a little too tame. You know what I mean? Um, he was able to really nail it for pretty much his entire career up until like the mid-2000s where I, I believe he switched up his equipment. He started using a different um, like machine and he was trying to experiment with the sound. But it's like, bro, like this heavy, you know, gutter bass line and all that shit, heavy bass. Like this is you and this is what we love about you. And please keep that, right? So don't let it get too tame because then it gets watery and it doesn't have that same feel. You know what I mean? Anyway, bass, 